well, well. Uh... Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike and today we're gonna get into some good vector effects with Affinity Designer. But before we go and dive right into that, I just wanna say thank you very much for all the messages that I've been getting through YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the DMs. You guys are awesome. I know I haven't been able to respond to all of you, there's a lot of messages and I'm trying to work my way through it but thank you for your support it's awesome and if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you know when a fresh episode lands which also reminds me thanks to all new subscribers it's crazy it's awesome so today what we're going to be doing is taking a plain style font well an awesome plain style font let's just put everything in perspective here we're going to be breaking it from that boxy look or rectangle look because it's going to be kind of a longish word and we're going to be throwing some effects in there throwing some seriously vivid colors in there and just making it look good old awesome so with all that said i'm ready are you ready because i'm ready are you ready i'm ready you ready i'm ready you ready i'm ready you ready let's just go make this happen and the bin just fell over. Why do I put the bin? Okay, so we've got Affinity Designer open here and we need to create a new document. So up here where it says file, just opposite Affinity Designer, click on file, click on new, and up pops this new document window. So with this, I like to set it on 500 by 500, a nice big artboard, just as it is a vector file, so it's not too much of a worry, but set it on 300 DPI, just in case you export it later as a PNG and it's, to the right DPI and you won't have any problems there. I'm gonna leave this on a RGB this time. So you can see it says RGB eight there, which is eight bit. That's fine, I'm gonna leave it like there because I really wanna pump up the color in this version that we're gonna be doing. And I'm going to click on create and up pops our new artboard to work on. So the first thing we're gonna do is add in some text. So over here, where it says this little A, I'm gonna click on that, that's your artistic text tool. I'm gonna to click on the page, just anywhere on the, on the page, and just type in some text. So I'm gonna type in creator, full stop, and let's just make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just get my move tool, which is this tool over here. It's gonna click it, drag it, don't hold shift or anything like that, it's still in a text form. So now basically what I wanna do is pick a nice font. So I'm just gonna triple click that, make sure it's got this like blue, block over it and hit up here where it says Arial at the moment. So this is your font family. I'm gonna double click on that and we are gonna use the font, I think it's called Brush King. Okay, let's just type that in properly. Where's it gone? It's a brush. Brush King, that's the one I'm looking for there. So Brush King. I will leave a link to the font in the description below. If you go ahead and click that, it is an affiliate link so it does help support the channel. And let me tell you, I appreciate it. So with this, now we've got a text in here. And you can see over here, if I look at my layers palette, it says creator, and that's basically the text. And there's a little A over here. Now we need to convert this to outlines. I do this every single time. Really easy. Command, enter. It converts it to outlines. It's currently a group. We do not want this as a group. And what a group means is it's got all our elements grouped into this little group over here. So now I'm gonna go Command, Shift, G. Okay, and that's basically taken out of that group. So you can see it's now all independent. There's no master layer at the top or anything. All these are independent of one another. So you can see I can click and drag them and they're all dragging independently. So let's have a look at how we are going to rearrange this. So the Eva's the letters aren't even, so we can have nice three, three, and three. What I mean by three, I got three letters, three letters, and one letter, that wouldn't make sense. So let's take the first three, so I've got my move tool, which is this tool over here. I'm just clicking and dragging, selecting my CRE, and I'm gonna put that over there. Then I'm gonna take my A and my T, so just drag over those, just pop them there, and the OR, and we'll pop them at the bottom, and I think we can do something with that. Just move it more into the center of my page here. Now I'm gonna zoom in, so zoom in, spacebar, command, and just click and drag into your area, and you can zoom right in there. Okay, so how are we gonna arrange this? So click that and just put it there. Just one thing, you can just have them touching a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's put it there. No, I think I prefer it going up at a slant. Okay, just, just touching, that's cool. And let's bring that in there. Bring that there. And yeah, that's okay. Bring that over there, bring that over here. This is all done with your move tool. And let's just bring your dot in there yeah that'll be cool okay probably gonna just use this r over here and duplicate it over here when we 
get going on all of this. You'll see what I mean in a second. Hold up, don't forget to subscribe. That just freak you out, <laughs> freak me out. Okay, so with this, you can see all these little distress bits in here, which are really cool. And we could use them in different ways. But for what I'm doing here, I basically want to get rid of all these little d distress bits here. Those little bits there, probably like those bits in the E. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is if I select it, I'm going to go over here to this divide option. So you can see up here it says divide. I'm going to click on that and you'll notice if I just undo and redo, you can see all that white bit in there. If I redo it and you can see it just fills it in there. So that basically that's what I want there. I'm going to do the same with the R and the E. So just hit shift of selecting them both. Just make it quick and click on this divide option. Now with the R, we had this big piece in the middle over here. Now if I try to select that piece, I cannot select it anymore. So with this big section of the R selected, I'm going to send this to the back. So to send it to the back, command, shift, and close square bracket. Okay, and that'll actually send, or open square bracket, sorry, and that'll send it to the back. So what I mean by that is that you can see my R over here. Okay, that is below my curve over here, which is the inside. So if I select both of those now, I can just hit this little minus subtract button and I'm left with just that little punch out there and I've lost all those little elements there. So I wanted to punch this piece through that piece. Technically, it has to be on the top. Okay, so with the E selected, the R selected and the C selected, I'm gonna hit add, this little add button over here. Okay, something funny is going on with the, that one there. There. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Weird. Okay, so with all those three selected, and I'm going to go Command X. I'm taking it off the off the artboard. So we're left with all these little bits that when we hit Divide, all those little bits there were. Those are the bits we were trying to get rid of. So I'm just going to drag my marquee or my move tool over all those selection. See all these are selection bits over here. They're all being selected, and I'm just going to delete them all, and then just go Command. V and put back our solid CRE. Now we're going to just repeat that again for the AT and the OR. Okay, so with this A bit over here, I'm going to go a little bit further this time and I'm going to get my pen tool, which is P or this tool over here. Okay, because I know when I divide this up, it's going to give me this weird line through here. So I am just going to literally click, drag. Click and drag. You can see I'm making these little nodes on the ends of it, uh, on the ends over there. That's so I get a nice rounded edge to it. So I'm gonna click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, and you can see I've literally just gone and made that inside bit of the A there. Okay, so let's get a swatch up. Let's just click on any. Let's, let's click on this gray color at the moment. Okay, zoom out, and I'm gonna. Hit V to get my move tool, which is this tool over here. This is your move tool. Select the A, select the T. I'm gonna hit this divide option. Okay, it's all divided up. I'm gonna hit this plus the add. I'm gonna add them together. Okay, it's just adding it together. It may take a little bit of time because it's getting all these little elements and adding them together and hopefully it'll work. Okay, so it's added them together. Now you can see this layer is currently sitting on top of our A, so hit hold shift. Select our A and our T and just hit this minus, the subtract, and it'll punch through there. Now exactly what we did with the C, R, E when we basically cut it. So we went Command X, okay, and there is nothing left there. Oh, that's good. So just go Command V and paste it back. So that's cool, okay. Now exactly with the O and the R, I know I said I was gonna do the duplicate the R, but that's too late now because it's part of that one. I am going to select both of these. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to select that little dot to just make sure let's move that dot down to there. Select all three of those little elements of those graphics. Let's divide them up. Okay. Select our R, send that R to the back. So it's command shift open square bracket, moves it to the back. Okay. And just select all three of those elements for now. Add them together. It's doing something funky here again. Let's just add those two together. Nope. Something's going on here. Okay, so we've got a split element here. So I'm going to select all three of my elements. I'm going to cut them. Okay, get that one. I am going to move this. I'm actually going to lock this one so that we cannot delete it. So I'm just clicking this little lock over here. Okay, I'm going to click and drag over all those elements there. 
delete. And you can see it's left our lock layer there. Let's just unlock that. Okay, well, oh, no, unlock it. Is that unlocking it? I'm going to go Command V to paste our element back here. And let's see what is going on here. So if I click on that, I'll just add that by itself. Then add those two. There we go. And then add that one. So basically, I've just worked my way around it. There was obviously something going on over here. I'm not too sure. Some pixel or something like that going astray. Now, with our curve, this is this inside section. We're going to make sure that's on the top. So Command, Shift, and close square bracket. Well, open square bracket. And it should move it to the top. Okay. And I'm going to hold Shift and just punch it through that area. So we got our C-R-E-A-T-O-R. -E so we've got a creator ready to go there. Okay. Let's just type this in here so we don't get confused to what we that's the Cree. That's the AT. And this is the OR. Okay. And then let's just put it in order. I'm just going to drag them in order so it's just easier to work with when you're working with them. Right. Okay. So the next trick here is to let's select our Cree part. Okay. Let's make a duplicate of that. So you can make a duplicate. You can just go Command C, Command V, or you can just click here and drag over this little icon here. See, it gives us this massive plus sign and you can just drop it on there and we've got a, another layer basically we'll just leave the three there for the moment i'm just going to switch those two off no let's just switch that one off there so with the top one selected okay so you can see this is the top one here let's get our colors up okay and what we have to do is we have to take out the fill and let's give this a stroke color let's give it a yellow I'm going to zoom right in here. Okay. Uh, open up our stroke palette. I'm going to click here. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So we're basically encroaching on the inside. I'm just seeing how far we're going to encroach in on this. I think we should do it to about there. Let's have a look. Okay. So just make sure that we keep whatever you do over here with your width. Make sure we keep that in mind because we're gonna to have to repeat it through everything. Uh, I'm just gonna check. Is that cool? I think that's cool. So I've got mine set on four points. I think. Let's do this all together at once. It's gonna make it a lot easier. So let's go back to our layers. With our two selected over here, I'm just gonna literally drag them over here and let's just work with. Let's just work with those two at the moment. Otherwise, we're going to start getting confused. I'm actually going to delete that layer. So we've got two, we've got two, and we've got two. So with your top layer selected, just hold Shift and select these top two layers. Okay. Now we said we've got a four-point stroke on there. So just add that stroke in. I'm going to take my fill out. So I've selected my fill over here. I've clicked that little icon over there. It's taking that fill away. All we left with is the stroke color. We just need to bump up that stroke width. So where is he on our stroke palette? Where it says 0.2 at the moment. Just hit four. Okay, that's cool. I don't think I'm gonna round them anyway. I think they are rounded anyway. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Now let's select all our yellow bits. Okay, all these yellow strokes. That's all selected there. I'm gonna go up here where it says layer. Let's just open up our layers thing over here. I'm going to open up our, over where it says layer over here, not our layers palette, our layer function up here. Go down to expand stroke, click on that. What you're going to actually see is we've got this thin little blue line there. We should end up with two blue lines basically because so, it's going to outline that stroke. So it's basically drawing a line either side of that stroke. Again, it may take a little bit of time because it's got a, it's a brush font. Brush fonts have all these little elements. So just be patient. Have a cup of coffee, fall asleep at your desk, and wake up, and it still hasn't been done. Presto, there we go. So you can see what I mean. It's now drawn that blue line either side. You can just see it on the inside of that black line there, but it is it has, it has actually done it. Okay, so how am I going to do this? So what I'm going to do with this layer here, I am going to copy or make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to drag it now to here. Let's just test it on this one first. I'm going to switch this one off. Okay. And let's make this layer here. Make it this. Should we make it? Just get our full. Let's get our full up here. Okay. We're going to make it green. Nice. I don't know. It's just. Yeah. We'll make it this green here. 
and let's select both of the, the yellow layer and this green layer here. So we've got both of those layers selected and hit this subtract button. So I'm gonna hit subtract and you can see what it's done. It's subtracted that area away. So now if I switch on our black layer, you can see it's give, given us that inside effect there. And that's exactly what we are looking for at this point. So we're gonna repeat that again with these two layers. So let's duplicate this layer. Let's duplicate this layer here. I'm gonna do them by themselves because it seems to work better that way. So just select those first two. Let's just make this this green color. It nicely shows up in our recent colors. Do the same with this one, just make that green. Select our yellow bit, select our green bit. You can notice how I always go off to my palette there because sometimes when you're trying to select it in here, it keeps on selecting the yellow bit and it's quite easy to select it in your layers palette. Let's just select this minus, subtract. And it's doing its own thing again. Okay. Now it's doing its own thing. All right, we'll come back to that one in a second. We'll do it okay with this one. Minus. Okay, it's done okay with that one. Something in here is going astray. So I'm just going to get A. I'm just going to see. I'll explain in a second. Will that make it work? Okay, cool. So basically what I did there, see it had this little stray bit in here and that was the cause of it not wanting to punch through. So with this, with my yellow layer selected, I'm gonna hit A to bring in my node tool and you can see it gives us all these nodes over here. I'm just gonna drag a selection of this problematic node section over here. So you can see I've actually selected them. They've gone like this fill blue compared to this white with a tiny little blue outline. I'm just gonna delete that, okay? And this was the reason why I wanted to delete all those little bits that we had in the in the sea over here. You know, I had all those little black paint stroke bits. So I knew it was going to be a problem. Didn't realize it was going to be a problem later on. So with the yellow selected, with the green selected, I'm now going to punch that through. And we are just left with this green bit on the inside and the black outline. That's cool. It's just what I'm looking for there. Okay, so with the black outlines, Let's select those and so all my blacks are selected. Let's make it a darker green. So let's go make sure your fill is selected. Let's make it somewhere like there. Make sure we go darker. Just see how dark we should go. Oh, I kind of like the richness of that one there. That's cool. Okay, cool. So I've gone there with my two greens there. Okay, yeah. Now with the outside, the darker green bits, we need to make a copy of all those. So I've selected all my darker greens, click and drag them onto this layer over here. With them all still selected, I'm gonna make a, a black line. So I'm gonna click on that, okay. I'm gonna make sure all of these curves go all the way down to the bottom because I don't want them going over our green bit there. I've just made them sure they go all the way to the bottom, not in a group, okay. And I'm gonna go to stroke. I'm gonna flip this around and give it a thicker stroke. You can just click on that and it gives us a good lines to the outside of the stroke so you can see what it's done. It has basically gone to the outside of our stroke there. Okay, let's make that a bit thicker. That's cool. Okay, cool. And we'll come back to those a little bit later. I'm almost thinking that this green, our darker green's gotta go darker. So I'm gonna select all three of those Let's just click on our color palette over here. And I'm just gonna move this one ever so slightly this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I have moved it 38, 186, 59, and I'm gonna click close. So you can see it's got a little bit more of that contrast between our like our luminous green and our like kelly green or Irish green in here. Okay, cool. So now the next stage that we want to do is we want to kind of jagger this up. Now initially what I actually thought about was doing like a triangle punch through, but because we've got this paint effect and I think it'll be cool to keep this paint effect going, I am going to actually punch it through with the paint effect. So let's just get a part in our artboard over here. Now to make that paint effect, what we can do is the first thing that jumps to my mind the easiest way to do this is to use the letter I. So I'm gonna click over here and we're gonna go I. Should actually, is that still in our current font? No, it's not. So there's the letter I. I'm just gonna double select that and get our brush font up. Okay, brush king. 
And you can see what I mean is we have got this a brush effect. Let's just make that a bit small, it's gone too big. Okay, so as you can see, we've got this brushed effect going in here. So let's convert that to outlines or curves. Command enter, just uh, it is ungrouped, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to rotate it slightly like that. Okay, I'm going to click that. Alt, hold Alt, and drag off to the side. Okay, and I'm going to basically flip that that way, all the way around. And I'm going to flip it over here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want a little bit of randomness to it. So it, it doesn't kind of repeat itself over and over. It will repeat itself, but it doesn't go like direct, direct, repeat, direct, repeat. And I'm going to hit shift and select both of those. I'm going to add them together. Yeah, that worked. Let's hold alt and drag. Now, while you're holding alt and drag, you can see I'm just making another copy of it. Hit shift, select both of those. You can just drag a marquee over everything. That looks cool. Okay, so you can just drag up your move tool over everything there. Okay, let's have a look and see. You may need to just do one more of those and add them together. So you can see we've got this big, big effect going on over here. And what we'll probably have to do is we'll have to probably get our draw a big rectangle over this area. So if you hit M, you get this tool over here, which is your rectangle tool. And you can just basically draw a massive block like that. Okay, obviously no stroke and make it a black fill. Okay, and you can just basically select that, select that, add them together. And we should get, yeah, there we go. That's cool. Okay, so going back up here, I want, oh, Let's get our move tool and move this all the way up here. So I kind of want this to punch through here, but I'd like it to go sort of at that same angle. So with our brush effect selected, you can see on the side over here, it's given us this up down arrow and that means I can skew this. So I'm going to skew it like that. Okay. And I suppose if you want to see where you're going to be cutting it to, you can go to your opacity, which is over here in your swatches and we can say 50 and you can see where we're going to kind of cut it through. So I want it halfway, somewhere around about there. I think that'll be cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's going to knock that back up to 100. Okay. And I'm obviously going to need a duplicate of this because we're going to have to punch through the AT, the OR and everything down here. So alt drag this just off to the side, just somewhere over there. Okay, Let's zoom right in here. Make sure this layer is obviously on top of our luminous green layer, shall we say. Hold shift, select it, and then just click on this minus button over here. And you can see now it's punched through that section over there, and that looks way better than our triangle effect that I was going to do. I think that really suits this. Okay, so alt drag this. Same sort of effect. I'm just going to pop that there. Okay, hold shift, select our luminous greeny bit, punch it through, wait for it to punch. Yeah, that's cool. And then do the same. I don't think we're going to, we're not going to need this one again. Just in case you never know, just alt drag it. And let's put that over here. Oh, what do I actually want to do? Let's, let's do that over there. Okay, so we do actually need it again. You'll see in a second. So I punch it through there and I'm going to grab this little bit here and just give this a dot. Now you can see it's sat behind the dot. I've got to bring it above the dot. Okay. Select that green, punch it through. And now we've got it. There we go. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So that is really starting to look really, really cool. Okay. So with this black section selected, so select all these black sections over here. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to paste them. Okay, and we can select the bottom lot. So you can see there's the top lot of it. This bottom lot over here is the one I'm going for. So click on the outline or the stroke over here. And let's just make a nice pink color. Select that pink, go back to the stroke and let's just widen out that pink. Yeah, now that's looking cool. Okay, so I'm gonna set that on about 14, should we say on 14, a bit more? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna hit 15. Okay, cool. So with 15 selected there, okay, I am basically gonna go through and let's select these three over here. 
I'm gonna outline them. We don't have to do this, but I'm, I am gonna do this. So with with this now as it is, I wanna add a little bit of like paint, paint splatter to it. So what I've actually gonna done is I've gonna created some cool paint splatter effects. So I'm just gonna open them up quickly. Uh, the Affinity Designer versions. Okay, so here's some splat padded versions I've created. Splat link description below. <laughs> so let's select this guy. Let's do this one. Let's do that big blob over there. We could use some of those. We can use those. And I'm just going to copy them. Go back to our creation. I'm going to paste them on this page. And let's just make them nice and big. So I'm going to click and drag and make them huge. Okay. Now with all our paint splatters over here. Let's make all of them. I'm going to make them this pink color, not the uh, pink full color. I'm going to drag them all the way to the bottom. Okay, so they're under absolutely everything. And now we can just uh, start adding these paint splat sort of effects and just rotating them and giving this graphic like just a little bit more of a edge to it. So you can see how cool this is all starting to come together. And we'll see we can just carrying adding in elements everywhere. Now the cool thing about these paint splatter effects is that we can use all the different sections of them. So we carry on duplicating them and you won't even know that they, they're kind of the exact same bits. Obviously there's pieces that you don't want like too far out and you want to bring them in. Just select it, hit A, Click and drag up those little points and you can actually move them to where you want them to be if it's gone too far out. It's not what you want. Let's get this bit over here. I'm going to add more down here. That looks cool. Now imagine this on a black shirt or a dark shirt, how much of this is going to pop off. So if we just put that there, okay. Now if I get another layer going over here, so I'm just going to get another layer. Move this all the way down to the bottom. Is that the bottom? Yep. Get my square rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag. And let's just make this fill this black color over here. And how cool does that look? That really like just, that just pops off. Boom! Doesn't that look cool? We got this vector graphic that we can take for a sticker size that we can go and shrink down to something like this or we can make it to a full size t-shirt to something like this with those bright vivid colors we may need to panto mash them if we're having to screen print them just to make them nice and bright because obviously with cmyk that's a whole nother discussion if we had to convert this to a cmyk we kind of delve those prints down unless we can find some method to print them and keep that RGB vividness and that's where the Pantone colors come in. It really just keeps it that solid solid bright. It would be interesting to actually print this and see how it comes up. What do you think? Print this? Not print this? I don't know. You let me know in the comments below. And with all of that and our awesome design we've created, don't forget to head on to our social channels, the other social channels shown over here below and subscribe if you haven't. Where is it? Somewhere over here. And until next time, keep on creating. I'm out of here.